Okay, so this is just going to be a very quick how to make a chain link fence video. We're going to use the array modifier a couple times and probably the mirror modifier. Uh, so what I'm going to start with is deleting everything and I'm going to add a cylinder. I'm going to, this does not need to be a fancy th cylinder, we're going to bring it all the way down to six vertices. And that'll work. Okay, I'm going to tab it into edit mode, then go into front view with one on the number pad, and I'm going to move it up one unit, so G, Z to move it in the Z axis, and then one unit. Then I'm going to scale it, hit shift Z to exclude the height so that it only goes in the X and the Y direction. Okay, so it's still circular. Now it's just skinnier. You can also get the same effect by adjusting the initial parameters when you add a cylinder, but um, I prefer to, to do it this way, just kind of habit. All right, so I've got reference up here, and as with any object that you model, it's important to first find reference and second, take a moment to look at the reference and understand how it's made and what you have to do to replicate it. So I'm looking at things like symmetry and repetition as indicators of opportunities to use the array modifier, the mirror modifier. So this is obviously a very strong pattern, but if we just trace one link, see it just zigzags back and forth, and then there's a second link that zigzags back and forth and intertwines with it, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to focus on this first section of link. Okay, so it just goes to the left and then to the right. Actually, we're going to go to the right and then back up. So I guess it'll be this one is what we're focusing on. Um, what I could actually do is if I save this image, and we'll save it into here, and we don't need this super long name. Just do that. I'll click uh, create a references folder. There we go. Click save. Now I can come into Blender, go into front view, and in object mode I can add in a image reference, navigate like I already had. There we go. Okay. Now what I want to do is position my reference image and scale it up a little bit too. Scale it down. Okay, so we're just going to trace. That's close enough. I can also go to my um, object data properties here and I can turn on use alpha and bring my transparency down so it's not overpowering. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my cylinder. I'm going to edit mode and I just need to add a, a few different edge loops so that I can add some detail and, and get that shape that I need. So if we keep it really simple, I'm just going to add one in the middle and bring it out to there. Then I'm going to add one there and one there. And I'm going to select them both. Okay, I'm going to go uh, into edge select mode with two on the top of the keyboard. If you hold down Alt and left click, it'll select an a edge loop. Okay, I can do this in wireframe so you can see it. And then if I continue holding down Alt and then add Shift to that and left click, it will select another one. Okay, so I've got those both selected. Go back into front view so I can line it up with my reference. I'm going to move it along the x-axis to about there, and then I'm going to scale them vertically to about there. And kind of tweak that accordingly. Okay, and we're pretty close to done here already. I'm going to add two more edge loops. And again, I like to, you can also select them both by going into um, vertex select and wireframe and just drag across. And that'll select all of them. Um, but I like to do both of these transformations at the same time so that they stay symmetrical. 
uh, and we will scale it along the z-axis. Now these are going to need to rotate a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate it. And we'll rotate it negative 40. Rotate this one 40 degrees to keep them even. And then I want to rotate these as well. So right this one negative 40. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm just typing in the numbers so that it stays consistent. Okay. So that's about all the modeling we need to do for this chain link fence. I'm going to hide my reference image, go into solid view, and then I'm going to delete the top and the bottom faces. Okay. Um, all right. Now we need to set up, the, set up the modifiers. The first one is we just want this to go all the way up. So we're going to add a array modifier. And we want to go one, but not in the x direction. We want to go in the vertical direction, which is z. So I'll set that to zero. And I'll set that to one. Okay. And then it doesn't really matter with this next number, but we'll say 12. Actually, 11, just because. All right. So that's our first link of this chain link fence. Uh, now what we need to do is <clears throat> we need to mirror this. Because so we need to get the inverse link. All right. Let me just so I want to add a mirror, but I don't want to just duplicate the object. I want to keep it all the same object because it's going to be easier to adjust. So I'm going to add another modifier. We can collapse that one down. So add a mirror. The default x direction is good. Uh, but you can see they are just intersecting and they're not overlapping and linking like they should. So there's a couple things that I need to do. First is I'm going to move, I'm just going to tap A to select everything, and I'm going to move it along the x-axis and move it back, so I'd move it to the left, so that these links here in the center, there's a, they're basically touching, there's a small gap, and they're not intersecting. Uh, the next thing we have to fix is the intersecting above and below the, the center piece. Uh, and that's where it needs to move on the side. So I'm going to select this, uh, and this, and this. So again, that's just holding down Alt to select the first one, and then holding down Shift and Alt to select the next two. I'm going to move them in the Y direction. Actually, I don't know if this is... Oh, I also need to turn on, on my array modifier, I need to turn on merge so that they stay connected. I'm going to select the top and the bottom. Okay, now the, the mirror isn't going to work. We do need to just duplicate this whole thing. So I'm going to hit Shift, or Command-D. No, it's not Command-D. Shift-D will duplicate the object, and then S, X, negative one is basically going to mirror it or inverse it. And now I need to work on these kind of... Okay, get out of here empty. I need to work on these at the same time so that they work together. Uh, and that's... I'm going to do that by joining them together. So I'm going to select both of them and go to Object and Join. See Command-J is the shortcut. So now I can, oops, looks like the merge didn't take on that. Okay. I'm just kind of moving these around each other so that they don't intersect, but they actually wrap around each other. go. I 
And it's important that you move the top and the bottom seams at the same time so that they actually stay connected. Uh, and then we can add one more array modifier. And that's going to move in the x direction. But we need to bring that in a little bit so it does that sort of thing. And then we can move these back out. So the top needs to be on one side. The bottom needs to be on the other side. Oops. And then it's the reverse for this. Okay. And then it's the same thing up here. It gets tricky because for this intersection, you kind of have to work at the top, work on the top and the bottom at the same time. So I need to select both of those and move them in. Both of these and move them out. And then, so you want to bring this one over and this one back over. Okay, and there's our chain link. And then from there, it's just setting your array modifier to whatever number you so choose. And there's your chain link fence. Well, that's the chain link part anyway. The, f the fence would be adding the poles, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, just wanted to cover the tricky part.